So you're looking to analyze some particles, and a big step in this process is the particle size distribution curve. But what exactly is that? I'll tell you everything you need to know, so stick around. Hey, what's up? My name is Andrew Kotlar, and the question today is, what exactly is a particle size distribution curve? Well, the end result of any particle analysis process is an accurate look into the individual particles that make up your production line. This is where a reliable particle size distribution curve comes into play. And WS Tyler has been a leader of the particle size analysis industry for over 150 years and leverages these years of experience to guide lab operators towards a process that is successful, reliable, and efficient. So in this video, we'll talk about what a particle size distribution curve is, how to generate a particle size distribution curve, what information this kind of curve will deliver, and how to adjust your process based on your particle size distribution curve. Particle size distribution is when a sample of material that's typically taken from a production line is examined to identify the average size of the individual particles. The particle size distribution curve is a graph that is generated to illustrate the average particle size, the smallest particle size, and the largest particle size. The curve shows either the amount of material that passes through or is retained on each sieve. And in, in general, a good sample should follow the same particle size distribution curve every time you run it. So when you're doing particle size analysis, especially test sieve analysis, you have a set stack of test sieves, right? Some falling on the coarse end of the spectrum and some falling on the fine end. Though some of your sample will fall into these sieves, most of the sample will be retained in the, the mid-range sieves in between the two. This is what gives you the peak that goes hand in hand with proper particle size distribution curves. So to calculate your distribution curve, you take the total mass of your sample and divide it by either the weight retained or the weight passed through each sieve, plotting each sieve percentage on the graph. But to make this process easy though, it's recommended that a 100 gram sample is used to conduct a particle size analysis when possible. So, thinking back to good old math class, a distribution curve is really the mean, mode, and average of your particle sizes. A properly generated curve should show you what your average particle size is, what the minimum size is, and what the maximum size is. This all links to the overall quality of your material. If you begin to see any weird spike or, or anomalies in your distribution curve, that means you'll want to look to make sure everything surrounding your operation is in order. Now, depending on the anomaly or uh, operation, there's several things that you may want to consider. First, you'll want to visually inspect your test sieves for any wear and tear, like uh, any dents uh, or wrinkles or tears in the screening media. If you find your test sieves are in working order, you, you should look at your production line and check to see if there's any wear and tear preventing you from obtaining the right size material in your quality control lab. This can come in the, the form of tears in the media used for pre-screening, worn equipment used for grinding, things like that. It ultimately comes down to two factors, inconsistency and human error. Things like forgetting to tier the scale when weighing the material and test sieves, uh, recording the data wrong, failure to record the correct starting weight, the failure to properly clean each sieve between testing are all common mistakes that can skew a distribution curve. This is why it's important to have a process set up for your lab. It safeguards the ways you conduct your particle size analysis and record data, encouraging a uniform process throughout the lab staff. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn even more about Woven Wire Mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click that second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name is Andrew Kodlar and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.